bodies. And that led to the cortisol study. We began to study the cortisol levels of people before and after EFT, talk therapy, and simple rest. This was a rigorous study. It was a triple-blind, randomized controlled trial. And eventually it grew to the point where it involved 83 participants. They had their cortisol levels measured before and after a one-hour session of either EFT or talk therapy or rest. We got the results in batches, and the first batch of results was one I was eagerly awaiting to see what would happen to their levels of anxiety and depression, what would happen to their levels of cortisol. Now, the lab that was doing the cortisol tests for me, again, these were blind. They didn't know who was in which group, but they were supposed to give me the results, and I was supposed to present those first results at a big, important conference called the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, short for A4M. And as the date of the conference approached, I wasn't getting my results back from the lab. So I was emailing the lab saying, hey, I need these results to present at this conference. Where are they? And I was getting a deafening silence. Eventually, I phoned the head of the company, the head of the lab, and said, what's going on here? Normally, you turn my cortisol results back in a couple of days. Now it's been a couple of weeks, and I'm not getting my results back. And he said to me, Dr. Church, there's an anomaly here. We've been recalibrating our equipment and rerunning tests on your samples because we've done tens of thousands of cortisol tests at our lab, and we have never ever seen cortisol drop that fast. It's impossible, medically impossible, for cortisol to drop that quickly in an hour. But of course it wasn't. Those people were relaxing dramatically and deeply, and we found eventually that their levels of anxiety and depression after EFT dropped twice as much as those of the talk therapy group, and the results were highly statistically significant. Their cortisol also declined dramatically, and the study was eventually published in a prestigious top-tier journal, the oldest psychiatric journal in the U.S.